Hey Barber, welcome back to the One Minute Barber channel. In today's video, the 50th video on the One Minute Barber channel, I am going to be talking to you about how you can start building up your confidence and building a career in the world of barbering. Now today, I'm shamelessly using the Scottish mountains, the beauty of the Scottish mountains, as the backdrop for my video. Shameless, I know. However, there's a little bit of an analogy in this today because I'm taking a route today that I've never been on before. I don't know where it leads to. Well, I've got a rough idea and I do have a map, but this is very much the case with most people when they start out their career in barbering or hairdressing, if that's what you're doing. So right now I'm in my 19th year in the barber industry. Now, I've had three shops in that time. I've trained a lot of people. I've enjoyed my career, I've had a lot of success. I've had failure as well. Lots of stuff has happened in my career, but it didn't start just with success. It didn't start with having a barber shop. It had to start small. I lacked confidence. Very, very few people start out in the barbering industry with a clear idea of where they want to go and full of confidence. Most people are scared to death of cutting hair and they don't really know where their career is going to lead. Much like today's walk, I'm walking up here not 100% where this actually goes, but I know there's a lot of mountains on the route. And when you start learning, it seems like it's just one big mountain, just so much to learn. Believe me, there is loads to learn. So let me tell you what I would do if I could go back to the start of my career and do it differently. The first thing I would do, and you should do, is think about your training. Where do you want to train? There's quite a few different avenues into the industry. So the first avenue in would be college. You would go to college, maybe you need a license in the country that you work, so whatever qualification you need, you need that qualification. Unfortunately for me, when I go back to 2003, there was no such thing as a barber qualification. You had to go to college and learn hairdressing and beauty. There was some very, very useful stuff in that course where I learned about the theory of hair, the theory of the scalp, what hot and cold air does to the scalp, what chemicals do, what happens to hair on microscopic levels, the layers of the scalp, things that are really just a foundation in learning about hair because you have to advise your clients as time goes by, you know, they come in, maybe they have a problem, you need to give them some advice about a scalp issue, you need to understand why hair won't style the way that you want it to style, or why the client can't do what they want to do. Now, if you're armed with that knowledge that you've gained from college, good rhyme there, knowledge and college, the two go together. Now, if you're armed with that, then you're in a great position. You're a bit more professional, do you know what I mean? Now, let's say you don't go to college and you take another route, which is quite a traditional route, and that is to go into a barber shop and learn. Many people do their learning in a barber shop. Nothing wrong with that at all. I'm a big fan of that also. One of the great advantages of that is that you are going to get lots and lots of knowledge and probably a lot of practical work very early in your career, more than you would get at college. You may not get the theory work. It's going to be mainly practical. If that's the route that you're taking, then you need to get some knowledge on the side. You need to do some learning, such as get some textbooks on the theory of hair, understand what hair looks like under a microscope, exactly what it's made of, how it reacts to products, to water, to hot and cold. This is important knowledge that you need to know. So if you, go, if you can't go to college and you're just working out of a barber shop, get that knowledge from somewhere else, either get it from here, YouTube, download it. You need to find that knowledge as well as doing the practical work in a barber shop. Right, so let's say you've done your college or you're in a shop. Are you in the right place? That's the, that's the thing. Are you in the correct place to be learning? What is going to be super important is getting that right shop to work in. You need to be in the best place to learn. So I would do some looking around in your local area. Have a look at the barber shops that are there. 
have a look at their reputation, have a look at the people that have come and gone from that shop. Maybe there's some people there who have been super successful, they've gone on, opened their own shop. Maybe they're very talented stylists or talented barbers. That's a sign that that shop could give you something very, very useful. It could bring your career on quickly. Now, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I would have a look also at other shops around the area. Maybe go into like some barber shops if you want to try and get a position in a barber shop. Go and have a look at the people that work there. Are they happy? That's a good thing to look at. Are those people happy? Are they skilled? Do they have good tools? Are they miserable? Because I wouldn't work somewhere where everybody was miserable. You don't want to be working in that environment. You know, you want positive vibes in the shop, positive people around you, and a good atmosphere to learn in. So that's what I would be looking for. Somewhere where you're going to learn. You're not just there to sweep the floor and make coffee for the miserable people who can't be bothered teaching you. Spend some time figuring out the best path. Right now behind me, I've got two paths. I've never been up here before, so I'm gonna get my map out and I'm gonna make sure I'm on the correct path right away. This is really important for you in your career to make sure you're not in a dead end job. You're going nowhere. You need to be learning and growing all the time in the early part of your career. So I feel I've chosen the right path. There's always gonna be hurdles, like this river that I've gotta get through now. I could give up or I can find a way to learn what I need to do to get on with my barbering career. This land that I'm walking through, it's all wetland, so like the rock in these mountains, these rock giants surrounding us, it's so hard that the water doesn't penetrate it, it just runs right down. So basically you probably just any given part around here, you probably be about no more than a meter or two down to bedrock and then the water is just running straight down into the glen. So I'm walking along the bottom of the glen and it's one puddle after another at the moment. So as soon as I get up into the hills, it's probably gonna mean that I won't have to take my socks and shoes off. So that's a bonus. You won't have to see my feet again. I know you're probably traumatized and I know some things can't be unseen once you've seen them but um, there'll be no more feet out in this video, I promise. Okay, so once you've been to college, or maybe you've been a junior in a barber shop, you've been watching and learning, at some point, someone's gonna hand you a set of scissors and you're gonna have to cut hair as a professional. Wow, what a scary moment that is. Let me tell you, that is nerve wracking. It's horrible. I remember the first time I went in a barber shop. I worked in a little tiny little barber shop in our broth called Ian's. It was like a little three chair barber shop. And I walked in and it was my first day after college, one year in college, and there was just hair flying everywhere. They were working so quickly. Like normally, if you're in college, you get to practice on someone for like the entire afternoon. But not in here. At that time, they were getting through haircuts in 10, 15, 20 minutes. And I just couldn't believe it, it's so scary. It was scary for me, it's gonna be scary for you. You're not alone. Believe me, if you show me someone who says they're confident on their first haircut, I'll show you a liar. Nobody, nobody in their right mind is confident cutting someone's hair the first time. It's scary. That said, you just have to do it. Take what you've learned, okay? You've done all that time. Take what you've learned and apply it. That's the best way to go. Of course you're gonna make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but that's how we learn. Like, what if the worst came to the worst, you absolutely ruined someone's hair, they were shouting at you, they were shouting at the boss. Well, the boss knows that you're learning. Maybe the boss will try and explain that to them. You might even get sacked on your first day because you're that bad. What would you do? Just go to another barber shop and try and learn there. Go to another one, try and learn there. Nobody's perfect as soon as they start. You've got a long, long road to travel. In that first shop that I was in, I'll never forget this. It's, it was kind of an embarrassing thing at the time, but 
you know, I look back on it now and I think it's a good story to tell anybody who's learning. But I had a client, I think it was about six months in, I just cut a little bit of the guy's ear off. A tiny little bit of this person's ear. And it just came off. It was the most horrible, horrifying thing ever. I was so shaken up. Just a tiny little bit. And the boss was raging. He was so angry. And he wanted to sack me. He basically said, you're on your, you're on your way out of here if you make another mistake like that. And uh, I went away. My confidence plummeted. I sat through the back and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Now here I am, almost 19 years. I'm in my 18th year and I've had three shops in that time and achieved all sorts. I've had haircuts published in magazines, online in various places and many, many people come and gone. I've trained people, but I didn't let that one moment define my career. It was a horrible thing to happen. Um, I want you to know though, that that guy, he just made light of it. It was such a small injury, but for me it was pretty horrible. So you see, it's easy to not have confidence. How will you build your confidence up? Here's what I used to do to help people build their confidence when they come into my shop. I would find the haircuts that were very easy for them. For instance, a crew cut. So something that's just clippers all over, that's, that's what that means. Um, and I would just hand them those types of haircuts and I'd get them to practice and get their clipper skills up. Get them to learn on something that's not too challenging. As time passes with cuts like that, they would get better and better. Then I move them on to doing little bits of a cut that I'm doing, I'd bring them in. So for you, you want to find friends or family who maybe have something as simple as a crew cut and practice on them. See if they'll let you, see if they'll help you out. And just tell them you're trying to learn. What it does is it gives you a bit of confidence with the clipper. You start to learn what the clipper is gonna do. You see the hairs that the clipper sometimes misses. And the more that you do it, the more proficient you become. You build up your confidence in that. And it's time to move on to the next skill. When it comes to confidence, it's really gonna help you if somewhere early in your career you can find a few friends that will let you practice and they understand that you're practicing. That really helps. I think a good way to look at it when you lack confidence is that fear is really your body's response to put you in a state of higher alert. And if you're in high alert, you're gonna make less mistakes. Think about it that way, you're paying attention. Fear makes you pay attention. So if you're afraid, just think to yourself, this is helping me. This fear should give you confidence that you're paying attention. You're watching for mistakes. Now, if you've been learning and you follow what you learn and you remember that fear is your friend and it's helping you stay alert and stick to the rules, then you will produce a professional haircut. As your career progresses, you're gonna to wanna to do maybe 12 months, 24 months, fine-tuning the skills, working on different heads of hair, different hair types, different head types, skin types. All these things will build up your skills and you're gonna get a chance the more that you do with repetition to get better and better and find good solutions for some of the problems that you come across when you're cutting hair. Now, one of the ugly things that often happens to people throughout their career, whether it be in barbering or anything else, is that sometimes others start to criticize you. You know, they're trolling you, they make online comments, whatever, okay? Don't let any of that bother you, okay? You need to just compartmentalize that in your mind, put it in a box, put it away, forget about it. But one thing I will say to you is this, if you ever, ever get criticism from within the industry, from other shops, from competitors, anybody else, you need to take that as a glowing sign of your success. That tells you you are doing well. And I can tell you from experience, once you start to irritate your competitors, not that that's what we're trying to do, but as you get better and you start picking up maybe some of their clients, they will get agitated, but it's a sign of how well you're doing. 
So if somebody's rounding up the public to kind of laugh at you on social media, I would just take that as a sign that you're doing really well. First of all, one thing is it just makes them look really unprofessional. And the second thing is it reveals to you that you're hurting them. So just be encouraged and let the clippers do the talking and watch your career go up and up and up. Well, that's me now. I'm at the top of the mountain that I was trying to get to. It's a place called Toll Mount and uh, Toll Mount is a Monroe. It's over 3000 foot. Now there's lots and lots of them in Scotland. Uh, over 250, maybe 280, yeah, I don't know, 200 and something. So how does the top of a mountain relate to your career? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get to the top of a mountain in your career. You might think that you are at the summit of a mountain, but are you at the summit? Because there's many summits. For one person, a summit may be that they come home and they are happy every day at the end of work. That's great. That's really a, just a great place to be. Another person, the summit might be they want to work in TV and film. Maybe they want to work on a cruise ship, working abroad, they want to travel the world. Learning those skills helps you do that. Another summit may be you're the best guy in your shop or you're the best guy in your town or maybe you win national awards. Maybe you want to be award winning and that's your summit. If you get to the point that you're winning national awards, you can always go sideways and then maybe do something like open a, your own shop or maybe travel the world doing a bit of barbering, doing a bit of guest work in barber shops around the world. It's a great way to expand your skills and enjoy your career. So from the Scottish Highlands, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm actually going to come back at some point in the future and I'm going to say a bit more on barbering careers because I barely ever touch on it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Time for me to walk home and until next time, good luck with your barbering. I'll see you soon.